Good afternoon. Welcome to the Ayurveda with Noreen podcast. Today I am chatting with a fabulous guest, Michelle Jerzak, who recently, com recently completed the master's program in Ayurveda at Maharishi University. In today's conversation, we'll touch upon how Ayurveda found Michelle, her experiences as a student of Ayurveda, both evolutionary and challenging, and finally, how Michelle intends on bringing this beautiful knowledge out there into the world. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you, Noreen. Great. Well, let's start off by just um, a little bit about your background. Um, I know you live in Minnesota. I know you um, work at, I believe, a community college, but just a little bit about your background. Yeah, sure. So uh, I live in White Bear Township. It's right outside of St. Paul in Minnesota and lived in Minnesota my whole life. And I, when I was young, always wanted to be a counselor so I can help people plan their futures and get the life that they want. And so I had, while I was in high school, I attended the community college close to our home because you could do dual credit. And I love the community college. I love the counselor who worked with me. And so it was something that I really wanted to do is become a counselor. And I is, as I was going to that path, I had worked also at the University of Minnesota as a, an advisor. I've worked at um, Anoka Ramsey Community College, St. John's, St. Ben's University as an uh, admissions representative. So I have a nice round of uh, skills in student development. And then when I was working at College Fair at Anoka Ramsey, they asked me to become a counselor. And I said yes, and I've been one ever since. That was probably about 25 years ago or so. <laughs> Wow, wow, awesome. Well, you know, it's funny because I, I, I heard you say in the midst of uh, describing just your career um, that you really discovered that you wanted to help people get the life that they want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, why college counseling? Because you could, you, you know, that, that could translate into many, many different things. Yes, yes. Well, I love working with students and I love particularly with community college students. They're, they're a diverse type of student from yeah. all different walks of life. A lot of them are the first in their family to go to college. So I, I myself was a first generation college student. <clears throat> I was the first in my family to graduate from college. And so I love working with that population because it's really opening a door to something that most of them never imagined they could do. And it's fun to watch them start that journey and really flourish in ways they never thought possible. Yeah, that's really awesome because uh, you're right that if they don't and, and if they don't have a helping hand many times, uh, they may start and stop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, uh, that's really great. Well, let's shift to Ayurveda. Um, so the first question really is, how did Ayurveda find you, or how did you find Ayurveda? But usually it's it's the former. How did Ayurveda? It's a combination you? of both. So. <clears throat> When I was an admission representative in, in a community college, I was working at a college fair, a national college fair. And I was walking around and I passed by this booth and it was Marshi International University. And I was walking, I was like, like hmm, consciousness-based education, what is that? That's interesting. So I walked up to the table and I talked to the uh, admissions rep and I was very interested in it. And they had a visit. And so I visited it with a friend. And at the time I had just finished graduate school, started my you know, professional career. And so I couldn't take courses there, but I thought, ooh, someday that will probably be in my future. And so I would drive there ever so often as I was doing road trips and stop in their cafeteria and eat because I, I became a vegetarian when I was 17. And at that time there weren't a lot of options. And so I knew that this place would serve organic vegetarian food. So I loved it for that. And then I just kind of knew in the back of my mind that I might come back to that area someday. And so as I'm progressing and I'm working as a counselor, what I've noticed in the last 25 years is that students have become progressively more stressed and having more complications and challenges with their health as well as their mental health. And so a few years back, I had decided that I wanted to become certified in yoga. I myself have practiced yoga and transcendental meditation um, for, for a couple decades now. And I wanted to be able to be certified so I can teach uh, just here and there little tips and strategies for our students to help them manage their stress 
mainly. And so during my certification in spring of 2019, uh, we had a unit in Ayurveda and I was just like astonished. I loved it. I just, I, I wanted to read everything there was about it. And then I thought to myself, hmm, I wonder if MIU has a program online. Right. Checked it out. Oh, they do. So that same, that summer, I was driving my daughter down to space camp and we were doing a road trip. And so I called up uh, MIU and I said, hey, you know, can we drive by and stop at your cafeteria? And I see that you have this Dr. Uh -huh. Keith Wallace as a speaker talking about consciousness-based education, which I was applying for my sabbatical and I wanted to do my sabbatical on that. I said, can I stop in and just hear him? And he's, they said, not only that, you just stay the whole weekend and, and be with our group. And I said, that's great. And so I talked with the admissions representative there and I learned more about the program. And I, I was like, hmm, should I start in the next few weeks? Because it was late July. Yeah, I will. <laughs> and so I started and that was the fall of 2019. And I was so thankful, not only for the knowledge I learned, but the fact that I was in this amazing supportive program with a lot of hope and a lot of understanding of the power of ourselves and healing during a time when we moved into a global pandemic. And had I not been in that program, I don't know if I would have felt as positive about the outcome and what we could do. And so I love the fact that- That's a really good point. I, I, guess, I guess from that perspective, your timing was, wasn't, you know, that was really great timing to have that, to have that support. Uh, and, 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 and provide that optimism that, uh, you know, with, with effort, collective consciousness can, we, we can create the shift. So. Yeah, definitely. And I did feel that. And I, in my third semester, I was going to be starting my sabbatical. And so I had asked one of my professors if I could be a teaching assistant and help teach. And so the mm -hmm. fall of, um, what would that be 2020, um, or 2021, I think it was, then I became a full-time teaching assistant. So I was able to really look at the knowledge from both sides, the side of a student and the side of teaching it. And that really helped me have a deeper understanding. And then I was also able to do professional development with the MIU faculty. And so the science of creative intelligence and Vedic science and the science of, um, and technology of consciousness. So I just, felt like I had such a beautiful opportunity to learn Ayurveda, but also learn the consciousness component of it that Marshi brings from all different angles. And even when I was, before my sabbatical, I would integrate some aspects of it when I worked with students. So I would um, maybe talk about daily routine or talk about, you know, the importance of sleep and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's that's awesome. I I think you, you there's so much packed into what you just said. Um, in terms of um, you you having the sabbatical from your job and having an opportunity to really immerse yourself in uh, not only Ayurvedic education but to be on the teaching side as well, uh, and also uh, mm -hmm. the foundation of Maharishi Ayurveda, which is which is consciousness. Um, and, uh, so yeah, that's, that's really wonderful. Um, during the course of your three years, cause it's, my understanding is it's a three-year program. Um, this is, it, it's this kind of an open question and what for you was the most evolutionary in terms of your own personal growth? It sounds like we're breaking up a little bit. If you would be so kind as to repeat that, that would be great. Absolutely. Yeah, I guess my question is this, and, and do let me know if the connection, um, if, if there are problems with, continuing problems with the connection. Okay. Um, during your three years at uh, Maher, doing the Ayurveda program at MIU, um, can you describe what was most evolutionary for you, either personally or professionally or both? Wow, there's so much to choose from. <laughs> um, I, I would say probably the biggest- You can riff if you'd like, I mean, yeah. you know. Yeah, I would say probably the biggest transformation for me, which really surprised me, is that I physically, over the course of starting that first year to really the second year, um, my health, 
I mean, I, I felt like I was pretty healthy. You know, I've been doing yoga, meditation, eating well, what I thought was well for, for a long time. And then about when I was hitting 45, I felt like, gosh, you know, the stuff I'm doing just isn't getting the results I want anymore, you know, which is part of the reason I be, went into um, yoga certification. And so when I started Ayurveda and I started to learn the importance of the daily routine, mm -hmm. that it's not just doing the right stuff, but it's doing the right stuff at the right time. Right. That right. made such a huge difference. And so, for example, having your main meal at lunch and at mm -hmm. dinner, you have something lighter. And at breakfast, you have something lighter. And, you know, maybe in a snack, you have your fresh fruit and you make sure that you don't eat your fruit with meals, you know, things like that, that allows your system to digest your food and get the nutrients better. Also, I've been a night owl for years. And so understanding that there's, there's a reason why you should go to bed by 10 p.m. And there's a reason why you shouldn't sleep past 6 a.m. And I remember that I used to, you know, um, work really late hours and not get a lot of sleep during the, the weekday. And then on the weekend, I would treat myself and sleep in, but I always felt awful. <laughs> and now I know the reason why is that if you start sleeping in too late, that's the coffee time of day, and then your body's feeling heavy. So, so to me, that was the most profound is just understanding there's certain times to do the right thing. There's certain right times. Um, between the, the semester that I had yoga certification, that was the spring, I went into fall. So between that fall and to the next semester, probably January, I had lost about 40 pounds without even trying to. I didn't even realize I had to lose 40. You know, I just started shifting my main meal at lunch and, you know, eating a lighter dinner, doing a morning walk, um, you know, being more regular with my meditation. And like, just, it started to peel off easily. I didn't even think about it. One day I was like, wow, you know, things are getting looser. And I weighed myself like, oh, wow, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm lighter than I was. And I was feeling, I feel between the time when I started the Ayurveda program to that, you know, second semester, I feel like I'm 20 years younger. Oh yeah. 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 yeah because, uh, you know, even if, even if you're still within the normal weight range, just, you know, carrying extra weight, um, it, it just zaps your energy. Just, well, you know. and also eating too heavy at the wrong time yes. or eating the wrong combination, it, it makes you feel tired. So I was like starting to feel tired more before. And, you know, I've had been in a couple of car accidents where people rear end me. So I've had chronic pain going up here all the way down or all the way up to my head. I've had migraines and, you know, I've always thought, okay, well, you know, I'll manage it with yoga, you know, staying away from sugar. And I did pretty well for a while, but it was always kind of like, mm, you know, there's still kind of some tension, but you know, if I keep on a regular routine and I do what I'm supposed to, yeah. I don't feel pain. That's wonderful. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, that you can't ask for more than, than that, a pain-free life, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good start, pain, you know, not having pain. Uh, and there are very few people um, who go through their day without pain. So that's, you know, that's, that's really a testament to the power of Ayurveda. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I like what you uh, selected as being one of the most evolutionary things for you in terms of uh, really just aligning yourself with, with um, you know, the, the times of day, the seasons, you know, it's really that alignment that um, it's sometimes it's not necessarily, like you said, what we're doing, it's, it's when we're doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You know, so. Awesome. And how about um, challenges? You know, this program is quite transformative. <laughs> how about challenges for you? Things that you can think of that you found really challenging or difficult? Yeah. Well, I knew it was an online program. And on the website, it said, oh, this will take about eight to 10 hours a week, right? <laughs> um, the, I just, I love learning so much. There, I would say there's a lot to learn. And I, I just loved it so much. So I didn't really feel it was as much of a challenge. I guess the biggest challenge was being in front of a computer so much because yeah. you had your webinars and you had to watch your videos online. You had to read things online on sure. top of that, 
already long work day. And so I would say, and that's why I got, you know, glasses to help with the blue light and, um, right. you know, trying to turn off electronics at 830, but sometimes webinars went to nine or 930, you know, so trying yes, to yes. really be intentional to make right. sure that screen time of course, of course. Absolutely. Um, but it, Absolutely. Yeah. But I, when think you during, I think also during the pandemic, um, many yeah. of us were, there was just more screen time because things were going more remote. And um, yeah. so our, you know, we were, our, our interaction was, was through the screen. So, uh, and it continues yes. to be a challenge for many people. There's no doubt. Mm -hmm. Definitely Vata provoking. Um, Very Vata provoking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so on those late nights, you know, trying to, wind down and go to sleep when I've been on, you know, the computer for several hours and it's nine 30 and my webinar is still going and I'm like, I got to turn it off. And then you got to wind down. Yeah. So that's probably the biggest challenge. Um, sure. yeah. What about, I, uh, going into just thinking about, uh, immersing yourself in Ayurveda, becoming a student of Ayurveda and some of the shifts that you were making in your own personal life, um, challenges there with incorporating Ayurvedic principles? Yes. So I would say that it's very tempting to try to want to do everything. Sure. And you don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> you, you want to pick your one thing. So what's that one thing you're going to do first, you know, and for me, it was getting to bed before 10 o'clock, you know, that that was the top priority. So and, um, and then making sure my TM was regular, that's another top priority. Um, Everything else, it's like, I have to do that. And then everything else falls into place a little bit more. Uh, another challenge is I'm a mother. I, you know, at the time my daughter was, she's 14 now, so she was 11. And I have a husband who's very supportive of me being in the program and the things I'm trying. But I think I was a little bit more wanting to change things quicker than they probably were comfortable. <laughs> and so, right. you know, just, a teenage, a person going into their teenage years, my daughter, and all of a sudden, you know, wow, we're eating a lot more fresh vegetables than I'm used to. And we're not eating some of the stuff I am used to yeah. the process. So right. that's a challenge. And it, it continues to be a challenge because, you know, her favorite food is pizza and mac and cheese. So how do I balance trying to get the good food in and trying to, you know, okay, occasionally you still have this and you know, and, and not feel like I'm creating such a divide between me and her because of some of the changes I'm doing. Because Ayurveda is very countercultural to the Western way of living. Right, right. You yeah, know? yeah. No, I think I think that's really great um, in discovering Ayurveda and just the power of Ayurveda and how uh, it can really be transformative. Um, we want to. It's it, especially with children. It's more power of example. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, we, we don't want to push principles on anyone else. So it's just, uh, uh, I mean, my children who are adults, much older, but, um, one of them said to me recently, well, you used to be normal. <laughs> so there's a little bit of that. So, yeah. So it's, uh, um, I like to think of Ayurveda as the new normal. Right. Right. Cause that's the hard thing is that normal in our society is sick right, right. you know not well yeah and, and again it's it's trying to be the example and trying to balance that but yet when you see people are suffering and you know you can be helpful like how do you prepare that conversation for with a family member or a, a friend or you know absolutely somebody. absolutely those are those are uh challenging conversations there's no doubt um, so you are, um, continue to, you're continuing now with your, your going, you, you, ha you had your one year sabbatical. I believe you're, you're going to be at the community college shortly. Yes. I go back on Monday. <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness. Uh, awesome. Well, this is a fortuitous time then. Um, how do you hope? Well, let me start with the general question. Now you have all of this wonderful knowledge and, you know, it's, it's knowledge that we want to share um, and we want to offer it to the universe. <laughs> how, how do you hope to bring it out there? How do you hope to bring Ayurveda out there in the world? Michelle? Yeah. Wonderful question. So yeah. fortunately, when I was in my 
first and second year, I was still working in the college and uh, everybody knew what I was doing. So they knew I was in the program. I would, uh, I actually had a time during our department meeting, I called it a mindful moment at the time, you know, just sharing some of the simple things, sipping hot water throughout the day, um, you know, different breathing techniques, uh, even the understanding that you, you can, you know, feel your pulse and there's a lot your pulse can tell you and, and mm -hmm. really directing my colleagues to resources on the MIU website or other related websites to just kind of drop these little seeds to say, hey, there are things there, you have an inner intelligence inside of you. And if you can align with that, you might see great things come about it. So I was very fortunate that people were interested in what I was doing. And when I had to apply for sabbatical, and I had to apply for professional development, I'm always writing in my applications what I'm up to. And so committees have to read that and they have to approve that. So that's one way of kind of getting that initial information. I was doing yoga sec sessions. And so um, teaching them both in person and then when the pandemic hit, teaching them online. And I'd always take about 15 minutes and share, again, some Ayurvedic tips at the end, talk about doshas and what that means, a prakriti, what does your nature mean? What does it mean when you go out of bound? So just trying to get some of those basic um, pieces of information, meditation, there's different three main different types. What are the, you know, pluses of the various types? What are the impacts of your brain activity for these various types? Um, and now with my sabbatical report, I'm going to again, formalize all the information that I've gathered and um, I've already had people ask, are you going to do your yoga sessions again? Are you going to do your workshops? Because I've done a workshop on digestion, a workshop on managing, uh, um, managing just kind of uncertain times, you know, so as a counselor, people see me as somebody who can share how to improve and enhance your life. Yeah. So that's yeah, nice. That's true. That, that is. Yeah. So you, you already, you already, uh, I love, I love, uh, I love it when students of Ayurveda um, they're already in a role where they can start integrating right away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And one, one project- that, I, don't, I don't think there's that magic moment. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's organic. It just grows organically. Yeah. And, and I'm very fortunate that because I was a teaching assistant, I got to work with Megan at MIU who, who helps a lot of the online courses. And then my TA, my very first TA was Roxana Medeiros. And now I'm in a research project with them. So I applied for a grant at our system office uh, to work with four faculty. And what we're doing with my college and at MIU is integrating what we're calling wellness touch points. So throughout the curriculum, we'll integrate pieces on, you know, meditation, the three different types, hydration, the importance of it, and the impact of water on your body, um, sleep, the importance of it biology, the importance of it, you know, so um, this past year, Roxana created a lot of the content and uh, Megan has created a lot of the structure in the online design. And now I'm working with four faculty, my husband being one of them, and they're integrating into the courses. So it's going to be intercultural communication and interpersonal that he's doing. We're going to do anatomy and physiology and we're going to do English class. And so that's really exciting because I love working with faculty and I love integrating wellness components into the work that the students can access. So that's my big project coming back in. And the, the neat thing is that- I love that, a lot of that's awesome. <laughs> wellness touch points and just, you know, you're, you're, um, you're integrating it right into the curriculum. And so um, it's there in, and it's, it's being offered and students have this great opportunity. So that's- you're making it seamless, which is, which is the important thing. Yes. And we're doing a lot of assessment with it to look at the impact. And we're also, uh, my team at Century College involves some of our, uh, our um, curriculum designers, you know, the, what do they call it? Okay. I'm spacing on the word, but the you know, the design. The curriculum development. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not curriculum development. It's, um, online design so they help with instructional instructional development is what they're right. calling it i think okay. um instructional designer so we have instructional designers we have um a faculty member who is specifically working with support for we use what's called desire to learn um 
I might use uses Canvas, but our platform. And so we have a lot of people who are interested in the work we're doing. And my my plan is that we do this level at Century, and then I can apply for a larger grant through our system office to then work with sister institutions throughout our state. Oh, that's I'd great. To do that. <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. I love that. So starting small, starting with your direct environment, uh, but really developing it as a prototype that um, can easily be replicated and utilized um, for a larger audience and mm -hmm. state, state, you know, with the goal for it to be statewide. And you know, that's, that's wonderful. It's really awesome. So yeah. Um, <clears throat> anything else that you'd like to share about um, the Ayurvedic work that you're contemplating doing in the upcoming year or your work with meditation? Well, yes, with meditation. So I have just been amazed with the studies that have been done on transcendental meditation and Ayurvedic aspects of different herbs and spices and things like that. So part of my plan You're for the future is scientific studies, right? Scientific studies. Okay. Yep. And in, in the in often peer reviewed journals. Mm -hmm. And so I've had amazing results with TM, just kind of that over, cause I, when I first started, I was very good. <laughs> you know, I did it twice a day, every day for years. And then I, you know, had my child and I kept doing it a bit and then it kind of wavered off and then it was ever so often. And it wasn't until I decided to come to MIU um, and take the program that I got really regular again. And sure. so I can tell, I was able to tell what it felt like to be strong in my practice and then have it wean off and then come back to it. And um, I could tell you that the stress level, the ability to just manage daily activities, and usually like you kind of are working through the day and then about, you know, in the afternoon, you kind of get that dip. Well, I do my meditation and I just feel great, you know? So I want to be able to share that with others. And I love the work that has been done with the David Lynch Foundation, working with schools and veterans and, um, you know, people who are in recovery or people who have, um, you know, been living without homes. And so they've sure. done amazing work. So I was inspired to want to become a team teacher. Wow. And I was so fortunate that at the same time that I wanted to do this, that MIU, along with Marshy Foundation and the David Lynch Foundation, are putting together the very first ever hybrid program for teaching TM for TM teachers. And I was um, selected after I applied to per be a participant. So they're actually doing a research project on this to make sure that it's going to, you know, work well. Okay. But, yeah. Now, when you say hybrid, you mean there's a combination of online and in-person training yes. for teachers of transcendental meditation. Exactly. Okay. Yes. So this is the first time that there's an online component to that training. Yes, because traditionally okay. it's a five to six month program. It's been recently in Thailand. And when I wanted, when I first heard about this, I was like, I want to do it, but there's no way I'm going to take five, six months out of my life away from my daughter at this stage. Right. So I'm like, okay, well, someday I'll do it. And the beautiful thing is that many people in the program um, that's their story too. They thought, well, someday they'll do it. So when this came up, it's just, it's amazing. It's a, I love online learning. And so being able to learn that way. And I just spent two months in, uh, in Iowa and Fairfield, only one of those weeks were for TM teacher training. Um, so it's nice that it's flexible. And I think that they really want to set it up to help work for teachers, you know, cause they're doing the in-residence during the summer break and during the semester sure. break. So um, yeah. yeah, I'm very excited. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I, I, I love how you describe that, that, you know, because of the redesign of uh, and allowing a hybrid model where there's going, there's an online component, um, you don't have to step out of your life. So someday becomes now. Yes, exactly. And not only do you not have to step out of your life, you get to integrate this so wonderfully each day into your life. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. I love that. Well, I think that's really one of the advantages of the Ayurveda program at Maharishi is that, you know, it, um, I mean, more and more programs are having a hybrid where there's mostly online, but having that flexibility 
with an online program as much as we have to balance our vata with the computer time, the screen time, <laughs> yeah. and all of that. Um, you know, students do not have to step out of their lives. They can they can bring Ayur, they can actually study Ayurveda not someday but now. Mm -hmm. so, I think yes. that is really awesome, awesome. Um, wonderful. Well, I want to, um, Michelle, be respectful of your time. Um, I do have just some rapid fire questions mm -hmm. that I'd like to conclude with. Would that be okay with you? Sure. Don't feel compelled to make your answer short, but um, <laughs> so anyway. Actually, before I get into the rapid, well, these are kind of rapid fire, but yeah. What do the words patience and persistence mean for you? That means pretty much succeeding. Uh, you can really accomplish anything as long as you have patience and you persist. Right, yeah, P and P, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> Both are required. Okay, now that our lives have become more virtual, meaning our connections are also more virtual, do you have tips for shifting into this new era which seems to be here to stay? Hmm. Well, I gotta say, I, I love that we're more virtual. Uh, right. I have my, I'm a bit of an introvert. My husband's an introvert, my daughter's an introvert, and we love having our quality time together. And so I think right. that what's been a blessing that, it, that maybe has been a challenge for some people to embrace for this shift is that there, there can be a slowing down in some aspects of your life. So when we were able to stay at home, we would work, but then we could turn that computer off and go cook a meal and have a meal together. Uh, you know, there's flexibility as we talked about with the TM teacher program is that you can do different things because there's more flexibility in your life. Now, the strategy I would say that's very important that I try every day is you gotta pick a time and you turn that, that technology off. And for me, my time is 8.30 ideally, but then if I have that webinar, it's my going to nine. But you have to, it's that you have consistency. Um, okay. That's a gift so to yourself. Non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. Make it, make, you know, getting that sleep, turning off the electronics, non-negotiable because we spend so much time on electronics. We need some of that time where it's, our brain is just being able to rest, you know, <laughs> being yeah, able to yeah. and, and to settle our nervous system. Yes, our nervous system needs that yeah. opportunity to settle. Absolutely. And, and then the other thing is everybody, I personally feel would benefit from learning transcendental meditation. So if they haven't learned it already, I, I would say that it would be key because again, that helps the nervous system. It helps just kind of give that rest that's needed so that you're more productive in activity. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I one of the, I, I recently listened to um, a, kind of a, a preview webinar on uh, EMFs actually. So talking about screen time and Ayurveda um, but one of the, and I'm, I'm going to learn more, but um, one of the remedies is really to um, really look at your prana, you know, to increase prana. Mm -hmm. And certainly the practice of TM, practice, regular meditation practice is a way to enliven prana, mm -hmm. the pranic yeah. energy. So there's definitely that balancing effect with um, our overuse of technology. So. Mm -hmm. And then the breathing techniques and also yoga asanas. I'm a huge uh, fan of yoga asanas. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, yep. Um, what are the top three tips you can offer that are simple yet profoundly healing? Well, we talked about the electronics, but I'd say the, the other ones are main meal at lunch, huh. light meal in the evening and breakfast, mm -hmm. um, sipping hot water throughout the day. You know, that to me is amazing. Any, anybody who may have like little bits of anxiety or little like aches and pains, that warm water just kind of soothes the whole body and the mind. And it just allows that feeling of calm. And then the other one is, you know, just have a regular routine as much as possible. Um, going to sleep at that same time before 10, <laughs> waking up before sure. six. And sure. then getting that regular meditation. And I think, you know, kind of like what I did, I think there's this tendency where people are like, well, I'm kind of getting that one and that should be good enough. Uh, but I, from my personal experience, there's a huge difference between that one and that two. And in fact, I applied for the PhD program at MIU in physiology and health. And I want to, as part of my PhD study, 
to really quantify to see what is the difference between that one and that second oh, time. That's and a then, great, that's a, that's a great uh, um, proposal. Yes, and then to also see like, cause my, my understanding is that if you can get both times in and you align with that natural law, then you're automatically going to make decisions that align more with natural law. So I wanna to try to see if that is quantifiable. Okay, yeah. if you're doing it once a day, does that mean that maybe 25% your choices align with natural law or that you make the right choice for yourself? And if you're doing it twice, will that be 80%? You know, something like that, because- I love that, I, lo I, lo I, I love that, you know, cause that's a, um, we, that particular principle, which I'd like you to elaborate a little bit more on uh, for our audience. Um, but we think about that as somewhat esoteric but what you're what you're doing is you want to you want to bring the scientific to you know um, you're bringing the science you're combining Ayurveda with the science consciousness with the science so I, I love that that's awesome um, and and you know actually what you just said was was really profound first of all natural law lots of our lots of our viewers and listeners don't necessarily know what natural law is but really what you're saying is you're aligning with the forces of nature. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So I, I love the word align when we talk about Ayurveda, because mm -hmm. to me, Ayurveda is, it's, that's essentially what it is. You know, it's not rigid. It's just aligning. And when you align, things flow. Mm -hmm. They flow effortlessly, you know, that's yeah. the beauty of it. Yeah. yeah. You're not, you're not resisting and you're, you're, you don't even have to persist. It, mm -hmm. it, just, it just goes, it goes. Um, but you, you made the point about choices that, you know, if things are becoming more aligned in your consciousness, in your physiology, because one, you know, it's a mind body approach, mind body unity approach, then things start to shift and you're actually making choices that are um, for your highest good and for the highest good of, um, your environment, either your environment, both near and far. Mm -hmm. um, so is there anything else that you want to elaborate on that point? Well, I would, I would say like an example, right? Yeah. So if you make sure that you get that rest through both sleep and also mm -hmm. meditation, which is a different form of rest, it's more of a restful alertness, yeah. then, and you eat that lunch, at noon rather than waiting. I'll use myself as an example. Okay, I used to work, 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 and oh, I don't need to eat lunch at the right time. And you know, okay, I'll just grab this processed food. Okay, now I'm starting to get irritable. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm irritable and I'm working with people. Well, now I'm impacting their day and their life. And then if I keep on rushing and I don't rest, well, now I'm starting to get a migraine. Migraines that will last three days, you know. Whereas once I started my meditation regular, it's like that choice of delaying. No, it's not a choice. Okay, I just would find myself eating lunch at the right time. Find myself making the choice of what to eat. Okay, I'm not going to eat this processed food so much. I'm going to eat this fresh, you know, vegetable or fruit. And so by taking the time, you know, I think Margie talks about sharpening the knife, right? right you you, right. you can use a knife you can use different types of knives. So different activities throughout the day. But if you have a dull knife and you try to do the same thing, it's going to take time. You're going to get frustrated and, you know, you're going to not accomplish all you want in a day. So with meditation and proper rest, you're sharpening the knife. So what, you know, what takes me maybe four hours, if I'm not well rested, I can do within an hour because I'm on top of things and I'm not frustrated and my head's not hurting. And, um, you know, I'm not ticking off people around me because I'm irritable. So, right, right. so Everything, that's you know, you're, you're increasing your um, level of efficiency and your ability to flow through life. And inevitably, mm -hmm. things are going to be better. Mm -hmm. So that's great. Yeah. And, that's and great what you talk. find is that, yeah, those opportunities that you're like, oh, that would be neat. They just appear in front of you then. You know, right. as you flow with life, you're no longer feeling like you're hitting your head against a brick wall. You feel like all the doors are opening up to you. And then you pass that on to others because when you feel good and you feel happy, 
other people want to be around you and then that makes them happy you know it's kind of this ripple right. Effect, it's right? amazing how that happens right mm -hmm. and the opposite is true as well mm -hmm. definitely <laughs> oh, okay um what does the term wise woman mean to you hmm i like the word wise i love the word wisdom and women i love the word just it, to me it means a strong woman who can make choices for themselves and for those around them to support the development and, and the health and wellness of themselves and others. Oh, are you there still? I am, yes, yes. Can you see me? I lost you. Okay, there we go. Something just zipped by. <laughs> I see you now. Okay. I'm still here, yes. Great. That's awesome. So, so really, um... Having, having invested in personal evolution so that you're supporting both your own growth and the growth of others. Definitely, yes. Awesome, awesome. Um, your greatest teacher of Ayurveda. It could be more than one. Okay, I have several. Oh, I just love the, I love the, the professors. I love the doctors. I love the teaching assistants I've had. I would say, you know, Dr. Paul Moorhead, yes. love him, love him, love him. You know, he hired me as a tea, teaching assistant and he's just so calm and wise and he's really helped start this program in Ayurveda. And then Absolutely. Dr. Charles Elder, he was our doctor for my cohort and he was such a wonderful role model. He was a doctor of internal medicine, but he was also trained in Ayurveda and he's done a lot of research out in Oregon. So I felt really fortunate to have him as my doctor. And then when I was a teaching assistant, I worked with Dr. Charlotta Beck, who is just, right. every, every way she describes things is beautiful. She's a wise woman. She's oh yeah. Yeah. Full of joy. And it's just, it's so wonderful to work with her. And then Dr. Nancy Lonsdorf, sure. I haven't personally worked with her, but I've uh, hosted webinars that she's been presenting on. And she, again, she's another wise woman and just, I mean, I don't know how old she is, but she looks like she's 30, you know, <laughs> I think she's been around longer than that. It's yeah, she has. Uh, yeah, those are wonderful choices and all um, teachers are affiliated with Maharishi University in some way. Yes. Oh, and I have one more. Um, sure. Vaija Amandeep. So Vaija oh, Amandeep, yeah. I believe she works with the bachelor's degree, but I was in a program with her this summer and and yeah, she's just amazing too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, and and. Um, several of these individuals have books as well. Dr. Lonsdorf has a number of books on women's health in Ayurveda, uh, as well as brain health in Ayurveda as well. So um, excellent resources and excellent choices. Thank you for that. Uh, your favorite book about Ayurveda? And there could be more than one. Wow. Um, well, it's weird because for our program, we don't really use books. And so the really, the only, I only really have one book on Ayurveda, right. to tell you the truth, because so much of it's online stuff that I yes, have, yes, or yes. I have, yeah, I mean, I bought a lot of, I bought a lot of books that are kind of consciousness based that might it could, also it could be uh, touching on consciousness as well. It, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say that the very first book I had was a cookbook and um, you're probably going to, I'm going to go grab it. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> So, oh. I never the name. so the oh. eat taste heal. So this was the very first book we, that I had that That's we an had awesome book. Awesome yoga book. certification. And so again, when I would read through this and, you know, look at Vata Kapha and all the, the beautiful pictures, uh, I absolutely loved it. And since then I bought a lot of books through the, I think, um, MIU Press, I think that's the name of it. Um, and I just, I love all of those. I would say that the next book I got was probably the gut, the gut books by Dr. Oh, um, Keith Wallace. Keith Wallace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I got the Dharma Parents. Dharma um, Parenting also by Keith yeah. Wallace as well, right? Yeah. And I think he did that with Fred Travis. And then I love that I got a book by Nancy Lonsdorf. I think it was the. Um, she has several books on women's health. Yeah, Ageless Women one, right. I love that. And then Dr. Beck wrote a, 
a book on the women's cycle. And so just amazing recipes and tips. So I have accumulated books over time, building a nice little library. <laughs> well, that was quite a few book references, given that you started out with, you don't know if you, ha if you have a book reference. So that was great. That was great. And uh, those are all great recommendations. I'll include those in the show notes as well. Oh, so, that'd be great. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what you wished for in your life that you're grateful did not occur. What I wished for and I'm grateful did not occur? Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> huh. Boy. I think I only have one, but, um, well, I'll say it anyway. So when I was 18, I had gone to a webinar. I won't mention the name of the person, but a very famous person. And um, I actually had wrote to this person because a friend of mine um, was struggling in his life. And so I had wrote to this person and say, oh, could you help? He, he, this person has written books. And so this person had sent me a new, like paid for the plane ticket. And I was able to go to the, this week long, you know, webinar and this and this, this. So then I was thinking, you know, I was talking with him and his family and I thought, well, you know, I was just getting out of high school and I wanted to become a nanny. So I had thought, well, maybe I would, um, he was looking for a nanny, their family was. So I thought, well, well it'd be nice to, you know, work with this family, his very famous family, lives in a castle by the sea. And so I was going to be his nanny, the family's nanny. And I had thought, hmm, it might be hard to go to college. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Kind of it, I decided, well, maybe I'm going to go to college instead. Was, so, there wasn't an online version at the time. There wasn't an online version at the time, you know, taking care of kids was a lot of work and, and yeah. I'd be moving away. So I think that might be something that I am glad didn't happen. I don't know for sure, <laughs> but you know, it leads me to where I am today. I love the career path I am, have done. I've loved, you know, the family path I've done and sure. just the education path. And so, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that because, you know, at every moment we have a choice mm -hmm. and, and those choices can really change the trajectory of our lives. So thank you for that. Even though they may not seem terribly significant at the time. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. Your top Ayurvedic tip for the summer season. For the summer season. <laughs> well, we're moving into fall, but it's still pretty hot. Yeah, it is still pretty hot. Um, I would say to stay hydrated. That, that's very important. It's something that I've had a challenge with before, you know, just kind of reminding myself. And I used to love to drink ice water. Right. As as you know, is a big no -no. sure, sure. Ayurveda. And so, you know, I I just spent a week in Alaska and it's one of those things where, you know, when you're vacationing, you're you're routines off a little, right? Of course. And yeah. so there was this, I think it was a couple of days ago where I became thirsty for the first time in like three years, because, you know, I'm just used to sipping my hot water, this and that. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this is like a feeling of thirst. This is weird. Um, you know, so I had to go back and get my warm water because like I was drinking the like sort of room temperature water, but it wasn't quenching yeah. my thirst. Oh, that's funny. What quenches my thir thirst is like you heat it up, you boil it, and yeah. then you let it kind of just get to warm and that quenches my thirst. So okay. kind of realizing that it's the water you're drinking, what you do to it's important, you know? Right. Well, I think it's all, all about the qualities, you know, yes. we call them the gunas and the qualities and, and, the, and the qualities of every substance can, can transform that substance, food, water, liquid. So yeah, yeah that's, that's so uh, keeping that habit up and, and just, you know, making sure it's a high quality water and it's, and it's, it's not room temperature. It's like a little step up. Yeah. It? Yeah. And that, and that can be challenging for people, especially during summer, mm -hmm. um, to want to have warm water. It, it, it's funny, but when I sip not again, not hot water, but when I sip warm water, it cools me down. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, but it seems like it wouldn't, right? Right. right. It seems counterintuitive, but yeah, that's, that's, that's great. That's, that's a great tip. Um, the first thing you do when you get out of bed in the, in the morning, I heat up my water, <laughs> so I, I heat up my water so it can cool down while I do my abhyanga and okay. then I do my shower. Right. 
And then I go into my the Abhyanga is a self massage with the oil with warm oil. Okay. Yes, yes, and I do coconut all year long. Okay, I tried the sesame, but it kind of makes my skin break out. I'm really high in pitta, so the coconut seems to be all the right. best. So uh, coconut oil is good for the pitta dosha. Okay, so awesome. Um, healthy habits are easy to start but hard to maintain, and Ayurveda is all about healthy habits. Describe the best advice you ever received to main, ha maintain healthy habits in your life. Do it one at a time. <laughs> you know, to, to really just take that one and just do it for a good 30 to 40 days until it feels like there's no choice. It's just part of your life. Because again, I think that, you know, I work with students who are in their first semester, second semester. And I think when you learn everything, you want to try everything at once, but that's, overwhelming. And then they get overwhelmed and then they feel like, oh, I'm such a failure. Right. So I think it was Dr. Charlotta Beck is like, just do one thing at a time and just do it, do it, do it, do it, do it until you're not thinking about it anymore. Right. And then add your next. Habit. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I also, somebody shared recently about, you know, bunching those habits. So I, I thought that was a good way to think about, you know, and so in, if it's, if it's, you want to do tongue scraping, abhyanga and some other hot water um, that, you know, they're there, you think about that as one habit, mm. you know, sort of, so, so that I thought was, was somewhat, I, I thought that could be a useful technique as well for people. Mm. So awesome. All right. Well, All right. Michelle, this has really been awesome. I so appreciate you joining me today. The Ayurveda with Noreen podcast.